Hey guys, Jamin the Shaman here from the Casticlism Podcast at Casticlism.com, and this is the Elemental Shaman PvP Guidelines video for 4.0.1. This is the patch in which all the spells have changed, all the uh, stuff changed, uh, but none of the content of the game changed. So no goblins, no warden yet, but we have all the new Cataclysm goodies for level 80. Um, and these aren't strict rules that if you adhere to that you'll win every fight, but rather these are thought processes thought processes and ideas that I have as I play BGs. In Arenas is a different story, a little bit, but this is 4.0.1 and Arenas, well they aren't active, so it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, the first thing I don't want to say about Elemental Shaman PvP is, uh, in BGs especially, if you run up on a couple people fighting and they don't notice you at first, feel free to cast a lightning bolt before you flame shot. Flame Shock kind of like sets off a warning in people's minds when they see it on their debuff bar. Using a Lightning Bolt first can sometimes give you the extra bit of damage you need to take them down before they can respond. So like, I'm f there's, there's two people I'm running up on, and they're fighting and whatever they're doing, and they're not paying attention to me. If I throw a Lightning Bolt out and then a Flame Shock, I got the Lightning Bolt's damage and the Flame Shock before they even realize that I'm there. If, instead, I throw the... Uh, a, a flame shock out first, then they notice me beforehand, and they might, you know, the warrior might turn on me and charge me to stop my more damage. But lightning bolt flame shock means I got a little bit extra damage in before he did that. Um, Paladins and death knights in 4.0.1, I approach uh, similarly to them. I that they together I approach them similarly. With that instant ghost wolf, it makes it really hard to kite a death knight, and paladins are just difficult to kite in the first place. But paladins and death knights have gap closers. Um, and they're both cooldowns. So paladins now, without the ability to cleanse, can be kited when their when their freedom is on cooldown. Paladins again have hand of freedom, and death knights have death grip. If I can get either of those cooldowns to be used before I thunderstorm, then I'm in business. I can thunderstorm them away and then frost shock or frost shock first, and then blow them up as they attempt to run back to me. This works on paladins now because again they cannot cleanse magic unless they're holy, of course. Um, yeah, another class. What's another class that I, I can think of? Oh, the one I'm playing with, Marco. He's a, he's a prot warrior. One of the things I noticed first when I started fighting prot warriors and BGs is their spell reflect and the new talent for spell reflect that gives them 60 rage when they spell reflect. It's so innate in my mind when fighting a prot warrior to hit spell reflect with a wind shear to remove it. Um, it's not sometimes the best idea with the new 60 rage, uh, talents. If I have them roots with that, uh, without rage, I can easily heal myself to full no problem and slow play him. Work him down slowly and just avoid dying while he kills himself on on me from just lightning shield and flame shock ticks. Uh, it's it's the simple enough game plan. Just keep myself up, avoid death, and light flame shock and keep lightning shield up on myself. Pa the prowl warrior will eventually kill himself on it. Now, although he does knock off lightning shield a lot, so you might just have to use a lot more. Uh, Flame Tongue Totem. Um, it's just like, Prot Warriors, I like to slow play if I can, but a lot of the time you can at a BG. Uh, uh, someone will run up and, and help them, a healer or another DPS. So so that's always difficult, but but when you're dueling, I definitely slow play. Marco hates anyone who slow plays him as a, that has the ability to heal. Uh, Boomkins and, and Elemental Shamans are pretty much the big two of those. Uh, Shadow Priest too, but if they come out of shadow form, they're they're kind of it's it's they better be ready. Um, what's another class? Hunters. Hunters another class. Um, against hunters, I want to stay in melee range as much as possible. I can cast in melee range. They cannot do their damage in melee range. So I can run up. I can frost shock them. I can run up and earth bind them. They cannot move away that fast, and I can stay in melee range, and they can't get their damage off. The idea is. Run in melee range and stay in melee range. Or uh, if you uh, put down an earthbind totem, they gotta either pop a, like a trinket to get out of range, or they're just sitting there for the whole for the whole duration of it. Um, Frost shock's another great spell now. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but with PvP gloves and with the talents, all our shocks are now 45 yard ranges. That's longer than any other spell in the game. We can hit anyone from 45 yards with a frost shock, which is amazing. That's what that is. Um, I don't know what, what that all is about. But 
It is amazing. Getting any range caster or DPS, like a hunter again, using it at 45 yards and they cannot hit you, I love it. I love slowing hunters at 45 yards and just dancing outside their range. Continuously frost shocking someone until they blow a cooldown like disengage to get to me? Again, it's the same thing with the Death Knights and Paladins. Make them blow their cooldown so that they can't control the fight. You want to control the fight. Uh, that's another another thing, same thing with mages. If I'm fighting mages, I know they have a cooldown called Counterspell. It is retarded against... If I get caught while casting something, that spell is locked out for what feels like forever, especially with the new changes to, to not lower that amount of time through talents. There's no more lowering that amount of time through talents. It's just crazy. It feels so long. So what you have to remember when you're fighting a mage is that Lava Burst is your only spell that's castable that can be interrupted that's uh, that's Lava Burst, uh, or, or that is not nature. If I use uh, Flame Shock, or excuse me, if I use, uh, if they interrupt my Lava Burst, and then uh, I have a nature spell as soon as that silence is over, I can still heal myself, and they can't stop me. They cannot interrupt me unless they're a Fire Mage with a, uh, with an, uh, the Im Impact, which stuns, or the... Uh, uh, deep freeze the stun again. They have to blow another cooldown to stop me from healing, and then I can just drink it and uh, and heal myself back up because they don't have a counter spell. Um, another thing to note about shamans in 4.0.1 is fulmination. Fulmination is a stacking to nine is not as difficult as it would seem. Each jump of chain lightning has a chance to give you another lightning shield orb. That's chain lightning. Every jump has a chance to give you a lightning shield orb. If there's a large group, you can get stacked in no time at all. I particularly see this in Alterac Valley. It happens a lot. If you see someone's at half health, throw a Lava Burst and use that Earth Shock and Fulmination to guarantee a kill. It's so sexy. I, I just, It is just nice. I love it. Fulmination is the best. Um, also to note, when you use Flame Shock, your other shocks go on cooldown. I mean, that's kind of common knowledge. But using Flame Shock also, and then, uh, excuse me, using Flame Shock and then Lightning Bolting until the global cooldown before your shocks come off cooldown is sometimes a good idea. So this is kind of a, the opposite of what I said at the beginning is instead of lightning bolting, flame shocking, you can flame shock then lightning bolt a couple times because then you can unload a couple damage at the end. You use lightning bolt to soften your target and then whammo, a lava burst followed by an earth shock or frost shock. If you're lucky, you might have stacked up some lightning shield orbs for that fulmination. Like, you might get like four or maybe five if you're really lucky after casting maybe two lightning bolts. But um, again, fulmination sexy, and you don't have to have eight stacks to do a nice amount of damage with Earthshock. Earthshock is still a nice, it does still does damage on its own. Um, and then of course, don't forget that the healing of 4.0.1 healing surge is is ridiculous. I can heal almost as good as a as any other as a, as a resto shaman without Earth Shield. My healing surge crits for like 12k or 11k. I can't. I'm not watching. What am I doing right now? And then this uh, druid is pretty terrible. He doesn't shift out of form to get a. I don't know if he didn't want to lose something or something. I, I have Earthbind down. And he didn't want really to shift out of form. And I do believe a a phone call comes in, and therefore I stop recording because this was supposed to be part of Marco and Jamin's happy fun time BGs, but um, I got a phone call and uh, I stopped recording because it ruined all the audio. And so I just decided to post a guide and use this as my uh, as some of the things. I'm gonna do another one, I think. I'll, I'll have another guide, uh, another video out with more um, commentary. And that one will probably be more me just talking about that video and exactly what's going on there. Um, I, I'm trying to think of other classes when I fight them. Um, other shamans. It's of course grinding totem and wind shear. Here, it's again the way I play is make them blow their cooldowns so you can blow you can blow yours you can blow them if you want to get really racy with the uh, with the comments um, you really you, you want to control the fight and that's and 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 knowing how many cooldowns they've used and is really helpful to know that they can't hurt you or defeat you or or, or destroy you you know and uh, that's it guys i mean that's elemental shamans uh, I, I'll probably get into it more, but I'm kind of running out of time, running out of footage, um, and uh, and that's that's Elemental Shamans in 4.0.1. Um, I'm Jamin the Shaman from the Casticles and Podcast again, and hit subscribe if you guys really like these uh, videos, and I'll keep making more.
So stay classy.